Am. I am Tamara. Uh, I am a lecturer in Spanish and in translation at the University of the West Indies, the Department of Modern Languages and Literatures. And I'm going to be the moderator today for this webinar. And, you know, this is a fantastic opportunity, something that I really love when we do it. Uh, we have been doing this for three years now, I think. And it is a wonderful opportunity to get to know some prospective students and, of course, to be able to talk um, with some people that I know will agree with me um, in thinking that learning a foreign language is really the thing to do, right? Uh, so I hope that by the end of this webinar, you will all be extremely convinced that uh, learning a foreign language is exactly what you were meant to do. Uh, and I hope that you choose the Department of Modern Languages and Literatures at UWE to do so, right? And the Department of Modern Languages and Literatures at UWE offers um, majors and minors in Spanish and French, as well as minors in Mandarin, Chinese, and Japanese. So all of this is going to become much more clear when the representative for each language gives their presentation. But right now, I just wanted to say a warm welcome. I hope that you're all as happy as I am to be here today. And I am going to introduce Dr. Villoria Noya Maite, who is the HOD of the Department of Modern Languages and Literatures. Um, she wants to welcome you all as well. Hi, good afternoon. Good afternoon, welcome. I was trying to set my video but I'm having problems so unfortunately I'm going to, going to be able to put my video on my camera on but um, I hope it doesn't matter actually it's it's best image what you are seeing now so <laughs> good afternoon to all of you and I am Maite Villoria I'm the head of the department of languages and modern languages and literatures and I want to welcome you all and uh, thank you to being here. Most all the students that are there, if you feel interest for learning foreign languages, so particularly to you, welcome, and to all the members of the staff, thanks for being here today. And I'm sure that uh, you know by now the importance of learning foreign languages and cultures. So I'm not going to stop much there, just to emphasize that uh, it's now pivotal in our global world to learn foreign languages. And also, if you want to succeed in many in many careers, so it increases your employability. And the most important thing for me is that actually helps you to understand other people and, and other peoples in the world. So apart from broadening employability that all you have heard probably before and Horizon, etc., the most important thing is that you are going to understand other people. And here in the Modern Languages and Literature Department, we offer you that possibility. So. Uh, we are here, happy to welcome all the students that decide and choose to still study foreign languages. And uh, we offer languages, but we offer also languages for professions that probably are going to be much better for you. And also, uh, we offer masters in translation and many other, uh, other programs that we are going to plan to offer in order to facilitate your employability and also your profession. But today you are going to listen presentations from other members of the staff, and uh, you also will see how dynamic, professional, and and caring is an international is our department, the student center, and we are thinking about the students. So you will hear presentations from the French section, the French section, by Miss Eugenie Asby, talking about the reasons to learn French, and of course, uh, from Spanish reasons to learn Spanish by Mr. Martinez and Miss Adegi and reasons to learn Chinese for, by, Ms., by Dr. Feng Lei and Mr. Shurui, and reasons to learn Japanese by Gra Ms. Grace Perez. So I will give the floor to them, and I hope you enjoy. I hope you uh, 
interact and participate in this webinar. And I hope to see you soon in the Department of Mother Languages and Literature. Thank you for being there. Bye. Thank you. Thank you so much for that message. And, you know, I just wanted to, I'm going to be using this opportunity to say again, you know, that this webinar um, is basically an introduction to our department, an introduction to what we do, to the different programs that we offer. And of course, a means to convince you of what I believe should be evident for everybody. And that is that learning a foreign language is not only fun, but something that will help you grow as a person. It will allow you to communicate with others. It will open your mind. It will make you more employable. All so many things that you've been hearing this afternoon with us. Um, I am going to give the floor now to Ms. Ojini Asby Bennett, who is um, one of our members in the French section, and also to Mr. O'Neill Madden, both of them teach French uh, with us and language for specific purposes as well. So they're going to be able to tell you more, not only about learning French, but I'm sure also about the programs and the courses that are being offered in the French section. In general, I just want to mention that uh, when it comes to French, the department offers both the BA in French and the BA in French with international relations, as well as the possibility of doing a French minor. But I am sure that they're going to be able to tell you all about this in a second. So the floor is yours. Muchísimas gracias, or should I say, merci beaucoup. <laughs> okay, je m'appelle Soyini Ashby Bennett. My name is Soyini Ashby Bennett. Uh, and I'm just going to talk to you, hopefully briefly, <laughs> about uh, all the reasons why you should do French. Now, um, are you seeing my screen? Yes, okay. Good. So yes. I've entitled this uh, presentation French for Life. Say we oui to opportunity because I'm going to talk to you about why French is a passion you will want to do for life and it, how it will make your life so much better as it has mine. Um, as the language is rich, there is a lot to say, so I will try to go quickly. So reason number one why you should study French. Today's world is multilingual. As Dr. Vioria mentioned, um, the purpose of studying a foreign language is to connect with people. And I would dare to say that you will find that if you do French, uh, it's a breath of fresh air compared to your other classes. It's a break from the monotony of the lecture style classes. There's lots of interaction and you get to use a different part of your brain. That was one of the things I loved as a science student who did French. Then the second reason is because there are 292 million people in the world who speak French. Most of them are in Africa, believe it or not. But French can give you access to Canada, to Switzerland, to Belgium, to the French Caribbean, and even to the Far East. There are countries that have Francophone populations in the Far East as well, that Southeast Asia, I should say. French will give you an extra advantage in the labor market. Now, many of you don't know this, but there are, well, many of you do know this. There are French companies here in Jamaica, such as Rubis, Total, Vinci, CMA, CGM, which runs the ports. Um, and French is the third business language worldwide. So if you have French on your resume, if you can greet your clients in French, that gives you an extra plus on your CV. So my recommendation to you to, is that even if you're majoring in something else, do more than one thing. I did, and it led to me having a, a career I didn't expect. Um, I also have a past student who was an engineering major, but he took French as far as he could go into the second year of the BA program, 
And now he works for Digicel and he has to collaborate with engineers from Martinique and Guadeloupe. So he's able to communicate with them. So as you'll see later, French can take you into so many different career paths. French allows you to discover a world of culture, cooking, fashion, theater, visual arts, architecture, dance. And of course, Fran France is renowned for its literature and its cinema. And as one of my former teachers told me once that you have to learn a culture when learning a language. Learning a language, she said, without its culture is learning a meaningless string of words. So here we are here to we are here to teach you not just a meaningless string of words, but the context, the life, the, the, the philosophy, the attitudes that go along with these languages. If you study French, you have the opportunity to go and study at a higher level in French and Francophone universities. You can do a master's in France. You can do a master's in Canada. Um, I've had colleagues who were up, had the opportunity to go do foreign, uh, do study abroad, but they were passed over because they didn't have a foreign language. So, and the particular advantage of French is that tuition fees in France are practically non-existent. You only have to pay a registration fee, unlike the United States where you're paying thousands of US dollars. Studying in France, all you have to be able to do is find your money to subsist, to, to live, find housing. But you can even do um, a, a, a degree with a French university online. So you don't necessarily have to um, travel to France to benefit from that. Reason number six, France is the language of international relations. I don't know if you noticed that the um, at the Olympics, you always hear the announcements in English and French because France is French is one of the official languages of the Olympic Committee. Um, French can take you to the United Nations, NATO, the IMF. There are so many possibilities. I myself have had the privilege of working for an international French organization called the Agence Universitaire de la Francophonie, the Francophone University Agency. That's another international body that we have a relationship with. And on the sporting front, I had the privilege uh, as a French student of being a team attaché for the Algerian team when they came to Jamaica for the World Junior Athletics Championships. So think outside the box and be prepared to be surprised. You never know what French will lead you to. French also offers you an alternative perspective on the world. Instead of being limited to the regular CNN, BBC, you can watch TV5, France 24, Radio France Internationale, all of these other uh, media houses that can give you a different perspective on the world. I myself as a graduate student benefited from having French as another language because I was able to access articles and research and literature in French that my counterparts just couldn't access. It's a language for learning other languages. I learned French and then I learned Spanish. It helped me to learn Spanish. Uh, and Spanish can help you learn French. It can help you. I have one student who's doing French and Japanese. Uh, just the approach, the mindset uh, of learning one language can help you to learn more than one. And of course, is one foreign language really enough? You know? Language of love and thoughts. How many of you dream of a gorgeous French man telling you, je t'aime? <laughs> It is a melodious and beautiful language. And um, of, it's not just a beautiful and melodious language. A lot of our great philosophers of, um, have written in French, Michel Foucault, uh, Simone de Beauvoir. Um, and the, the, the action of studying the language, analyzing its structure, observing patterns, develops your critical thinking, not to mention the process of studying literary works also develops your critical thinking and analytical skills, which are very marketable soft skills. And finally, before I move on to the career opportunities, I would say that it is a language for travel. France attracts 85 million visitors per year, but it's not just France, it's Africa, it's Canada, it's Switzerland, the Seychelles, the islands of the Pacific. France can take you so many places.
What are the career opportunities with French? I'll let you look at this, this cloud, this word cloud of all the, the professions that my, my colleague, Mr. Lorenzo Lynch was able to identify um, that, can, that French can give you access to. I know you see the big ones that are usually associated with foreign language learning, like translation and education. But I wonder if I could just take a moment to ask one or two participants to just point out one or two um, fields or professions that they see here that they never would have thought French could help you with. Anybody? Okay, any, any professions that you think, okay, that, that makes sense. I, I, I might not have thought of that at first, but it's, it's logical. Okay, <laughs> the class is very quiet. So as you can see, the usual translation and interpretation that everybody thinks about, those are great professions. It can take you places. Uh, it, it can allow you to work from home. It allows you to travel. And if you have a background in another field, it allows you to do specialized translations. I have a friend who was a medical doctor and now she does medical translations in French. Teaching and education is a very rewarding field. I'm a teacher, I love it. <laughs> I thought I was going to be an environmentalist or a diplomat at the UN, but teaching called me and it may call you too. Of course, I talked before about international relations and diplomacy. Um, it's not just the big organizations like the UN, but there are also many NGOs that operate in French speaking countries. And um, so it can open opportunities to work on international development projects, humanitarian projects, or other social initiatives. We talked about the travel opportunities. Um, French is a global language. So people who speak other languages, maybe somebody who comes to Jamaica who speaks um, uh, Burmese or Laos, no, that I'm a big a bit. Those are extreme examples. <laughs> but somebody from Africa who comes to Jamaica, for example, he might speak another language, not English, and French might not be his first language, but because both of you have some French, you can communicate with each other. And so French is a useful lingua franca between people who don't speak the same language. There is, of course, business and commerce. I mentioned some of the companies that work in Jamaica, but careers in international business, marketing, and sales can benefit from French proficiency. There is hospitality and culinary arts. Of course, French cooking is fantastic. If you can go to France and, and learn at the Cordon Bleu, you're set for life. Uh, media and journalism. I talked about the media houses that operate in French. You, you, you have access to a world of information if you can speak French. Healthcare and medical fields, art and culture, technology and engineering, law and legal services, remote work and freelancing, freelance writing, um, human resources, environment and sustainability, fashion and design, aviation. I don't know if any of you have heard of the IATA, which is based in Switzerland and um, archaeology and cultural heritage, sports and recreation. I, I, the list goes on. I think I have something like 25 things on my list. So I'll stop here. Oh, and I want to mention music and entertainment. Um, French reggae is huge in France. So if you are in the creative industries, you might find a clientele in France. Now, so what does this mean? What courses do you take at the UWI? Well, if you have no French background, you can still join us. You can start at the beginner's level with French 0101. If you have um, CSEC French, you can start at the intermediate one or intermediate two level. And then once you've completed all of those courses, you can go into the bachelor's program. And in the bachelor's program, each level, we have three levels, levels one, two, and three. And you do in each year, uh, two language courses, one in each semester. And as the numbers, as you see the course codes there, the codes that start with one are in level one the first year, the codes that start with two, second year, et cetera. But we also have French for specific purposes. So we have French for international relations and French for business. 
We also, as I alluded to before, put a lot of emphasis on literature and culture. So we have literature, film and culture courses at every level of the program. You're not just studying French literature from France, you're studying Caribbean and African literature and film. Uh, you are studying Francophone culture in all the places that French is spoken. And um, you can do a research project in your final year. So this, break, this diagram here breaks down where you would start depending on what you have. So if you have no CSEC, you start at Friends 0101. And I have it here for Spanish as well because Spanish and French codes mirror, mirror each other. So if you have a grade two or three in CSEC, you go to intermediate one, Friend 1000. If you have a grade one in CSEC, you get to skip a course. You get to go straight to Friend 1010. And then if you have CAPE, you go directly into the, B, the BA program, which is starts at Friend 1001. Now, if you start from the preliminary level, yes, it will take you longer to complete the degree in French, but not too much longer. It will take you four years. If you start from 0101, you can, uh, or if you start from 1000, you can, you can do 1000 in semester one, 1010 in semester two. And then in the summer, you can do the first year, the level one of the BA in the summer school, provided we have enough students. And then in your second year, you would be joining um, the, those people who had started at level one in the regular year in their first year. I myself did the summer course in uh, Friend 1199, and I was able to go straight into level two in my second year of my degree. Dr. Viore and Dr. Danis Anton alluded to our new program, French and International Relations. It is an exciting course. Um, or many of our students come to us majoring in international relations and they take French because they're required to do a language for six credits of a language. Six credits is not enough. What you really need is to do a full program in French if you are an international relations student. So you get to do a, a prescribed set of government courses as well as a prescribed set of French courses which will allow you to explore film, politics, literature, and cultural studies. And you will graduate multilingual, multicultural. And then of course, there is the Master of Arts in Languages, Literatures, and Film Studies, which is a relatively new program. I think Dr. Danis Anton can tell you more about that. And um, that's it for me. I hope I did not go too long. Did I, did I Dr. Danis? <laughs> OK, thank you. Merci beaucoup. Je vous remercie tous de votre coopération et de votre écoute. Thank you for listening. Thank you for cooperating. Et looking forward to seeing, and I'm looking forward to seeing you in our French classes. Bonne journée. You were not too long. You were wonderful. Wonderful presentation. Thank you so much. I mean, if this has not already convinced you that you have to, to learn French and of course the other languages in the department, I don't know what will. Um, I think that you should now have a clear idea of what the Department of Modern Languages and Literatures is offering when it comes to French. I would just like to emphasize that as Soyini has mentioned, um, we are not only here to teach you language, which of course is very important because it's going to allow you to communicate with other people, it's going to allow you to become more employable, all those things. We're also here to teach you culture, to teach you literature, to teach you translation, to teach you film. And it is because all this context is absolutely necessary when you are learning a new language, right? A new language will allow you to see the world in a different way. It will allow you to understand the world in a different way. And this is because culture and language, they're extremely interlinked, right? So we are not only offering language courses, we are here to offer you a whole new world that you can learn from. And now I think it's Mr. Madden's turn, right? 
I'm here, right. Bonjour tout le monde. I hope you have a, you, but you're not convinced to take on French by what Madame Ashby just said to you. And just a matter, I mean, any other language that will come afterwards. So we're going to play a little game. It's called Jeopardy. My time is not a lot, so. Uh, there are two categories, la culture française and la francophonie. So I'm just going to invite people to volunteer, raise your hand, or open your mics and just tell which category you'd like and uh, what amount. And then the question will come up. Qui veut commencer? Who wants to start? Let's go. I know we have at least one French student out there. Anybody that wants to try this exercise? Come on. Okay, I, I could, I could try. Um, cool, cool, culture process. Uh, mm -hmm. Um, so, um, 100. So, culture française song, okay? Culture française, oui. So, which is more important than the French meal, cheese or dessert? If you know the answer, you can go ahead and pose it in the chat. Cheese or dessert, which of them is more important at a French meal? I see cheese. Keep them coming from us. Cheese, cheese. All right. Let's see if it's cheese. Et c'est bien le fromage. Le fromage. So you've gained for yourself 100 euros. All right. You can link me afterwards for it. All right. Let's go. Next person. I would go for La Francophonie, 300. La Francophonie, 300. All right. By what other name is France officially called? L'Hexagon, the country of love, the country of the free. I'm seeing a hand up. All right. E, B, the country of love. All right. Grant, your hand is up. You want to go ahead? Of love. Country of love. All right. Let's see what the correct answer is. Legs are gone. Notice the question as officially called. Officially called. So it is called legs are gone. Anybody knows why? It's the shape of the country. Right. So the shape of France, if you look at the map of France, it's shaped like an hexagon. Um, Paris is called the city of love. Not necessarily in France entirely. I mean, though it passes, but it's really Paris that is called the city of love. All right. Let's do two more quickly. Hi guys, are you hearing? Yes. Leslie. Yes, I would like to try La Francophonie 100. Just 100? So... Yes, just 100. <laughs> All right. Which island does not belong based on geographic location?
Dean, Dean. All right. Any more answers coming? I think many people are settling for a D. All right. Et voilà, c'est la bonne réponse. Donc, c'est la réunion, which is found in Africa. So, la Martinique, la Guadeloupe et la Saint-Martin, they're all in the French West Indies. All right? Shall we take one more? All right, Couture Frankson. All right, brave. Easy one, though. What's <laughs> it? Most person developed a system for the visually impaired to read. Oléon Bonaparte, Louis Braille, ou Emmanuel Macron. Scene B. Easy one, yeah, easy one. All right, so I think we can take one more then, since you got that one very quickly. Shall we go for La Francophonie Samson? <laughs> you want your euros not telling it, learn it. All right, let's do Samson La Francophonie. Let me wrap it up. Easy one. What are some benefits of learning French? Yes, go ahead. Um, Right. Getting to study in other foreign countries. Three. You get to study abroad. Uh -huh. You get to travel. Yes. Anything else? Uh, you get to understand another culture, right? So, good job of opportunities, right? So, you're better equipped for employability, ease of travel, get to meet new people, learn another culture. And D, there are just too many benefits to list. Too many benefits to list. So, merci beaucoup. And choose French. Or which, are, which are the language? One of the things I would like to also point out, having lived in France for seven years, is that once you get within the Schengen zone, you have access to all the, I think it's now 26 countries that form part of the Schengen zone. So if afterwards you're convinced to choose Spanish, then you can go to Spain, but you can still cross over into France and in Italy and all these other countries. So. You can't lose when you choose to study languages. All right? Merci beaucoup. Thank you so much. And yes, in case you don't believe us, um, we are going to give you access to a video from one of our students, Christy Brown, who is a student in the VA in French, that I'm sure will be able to tell you why studying French is the way to go. Coucou tout le monde, je m'appelle Christy. Hello everyone, my name is Christy and I'm a recent graduate of the Department of Modern Languages and Literatures where I completed a degree in, yes you guessed it, French. I did a French major and a linguistics minor and I finished with first class honors. Now this achievement was due in part to the amazing instructors in the French department. They really do care for their students and they want to see you achieve your fullest potential. Now their care doesn't stop after you get the degree because to this day, my instructors look out for me and other past students. Currently, I'm preparing to move to Martinique where I'll be a language assistant. This is one of many opportunities afforded by the department. There are also scholarships and bursaries that students can benefit from. So, do I recommend doing a degree there? Of course I do, it's the best decision I could have made for my university journey. Look at me, I'm traveling the world. 
to a degree in modern languages. Au revoir! So Yimi, you wanted to say something, right? Yeah. Yes, I just wanted to point out that the student you just heard from, Christy, she started from the preliminary level and she got a BA in French with first class honors. And the program she was talking about is called the Teaching Assistant Program in France. Um, I have participated in it and I think all of our current French lecturers actually did it as well. It's an opportunity to go to France to assist with teaching English in high schools. And uh, we recruit new people every year. So you can consult the French Embassy in Jamaica website and you'll find the criteria. Um, you can also contact me, I'm the recruiter. So it's a wonderful opportunity to go to, Fran to France for seven months, live there, work there, get paid. And you, as Mr. Madden mentioned, once you're in France, you have access to 26 European countries. So it's a wonderful open door for you. There are also exchange programs that the UWI has with Canada. You can spend a semester or a year in Montreal. That's another great opportunity. Thank you for listening to me again. <laughs> Merci. Okay, thank you so much. So I just wanted to say that, of course, you know, as I mentioned at the beginning of the webinar, I am a lecturer in translation. And, you know, when you do translation, having one foreign language is normally not enough. So my advice would be not to do only French, for example. My advice would be to go and do your double major in French and Spanish, uh, both French and Spanish, as well as English, of course, uh, tend to be official languages in a lot of the big international organizations that are always going to need translators and interpreters. So that's always a very good option. And of course, if you then go ahead and study some of our Asian languages as well, you are definitely going to be the most employable person out there. So I think it is time now to give the floor to our members of the Spanish section that are going to be presenting for you today. Um, Mr. Martinez, are you there? Good afternoon, do you hear me? Yes, we do. Okay. Buenas tardes, chicos, chicas, ¿cómo están? Okay, let me, I will try to convince you to study Spanish. Why? I mean, for, for a student who lives in Jamaica, or even in the Caribbean country, uh, uh, have you seen uh, the island is around, but most of the Latin American countries, the reason why national neighbors, mm -hmm. A part of that, we share uh, a lot of culture, uh -huh. pretty close, some of them, like uh, music, you know, who, who don't like, who don't like to, to dance reggaeton. Someone can tell me that you don't like reggaeton, that you don't like Bad Bunny, that you don't like Daddy Yankee. Mm -hmm. As well. As well, uh, part of the reggaeton, well, we share as well as uh, salsa music and the food is quite similar. It's true. Mm -hmm. Why Spanish and English? Why Spanish and English? Probably you don't realize, but we share more than 40,000 words. I mean, two languages share more than 40,000 words. I mean, that's giving the for those students in Spanish are, are very good at advance from the rest of the languages. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's an important thing that we have to, to be in mind at the time to come to you with, to our department and to choose a language. And other things, if you want to get a, a good job, no matter if you go into to planning, 
to travel to immigrate to United States, Canada, or England, this country as well are looking for professionals with two languages as well. And for sure, Spanish is, is included in one of the most important one. Another thing, even in Jamaica, that the most important uh, economic sector in this beautiful country, this hospitality. Well, there are several Spanish uh, company, hotels company that are assume a big role within the, the industry. Uh -huh. You know, Rio, Rio, Everstar, Melia, all of those staff and hotels belongs to Spanish company. And as soon as you belongs to that, those company, you are able to work around the world with those company. And the Spanish for sure will be a very good advance. Mm -hmm. And in order to, to finish this very quick, um, I would say that as soon as if you know Spanish, you will be able to catch very easily Portuguese and Italian in a very good way and very easy, good way. Reason why, just mention few uh, uh, opportunity and advance that provide you to study Spanish. I will say to choose Spanish and come to us, to our department. Thanks. Okay, hi again. So I just wanted to mention some of the things that we offer in the Department of Modern Languages and Literatures when it comes to Spanish. Uh, Madame Aspi uh, already did a wonderful job explaining how to get to the BA in French and Spanish because she was showing the course code side by side. So I just want to mention that if you are studying Spanish with us in the department, we offer not only language courses, and you know, as we said for French, um, you can start from the very beginning, you can start from scratch with beginner Spanish, and you can move up so we are not only offering language courses, we're also offering literature courses where you're going to learn, is learn things about the Spanish literature, about Caribbean literature, about a Latin American literature. We offer translation courses, which of course are great, as you can imagine, because I love them. And uh, we offer film courses right honestly there's so much that you can learn about the spanish language spanish culture spanish literature we have a lot to offer and we are waiting for you to register and come join us and we promise that you will have a wonderful time with us uh, i am now going to give the floor to uh jasmine Hello, buenas tardes. Um, hola a todos y a todas. Um, I am Yasmin Sadegui. I am from Spain and I'm a, a, an assistant lecturer for the Spanish department. And I teach Spanish um, throughout the major courses and also in, in the beginners courses. And what I have prepared for you is a fun Kahoot game that I'm sure you are all familiar with or most of you. But before that, I would like to share very quickly some of the careers and some of also the fun facts that um, uh, that are related to the Spanish language and the and the possibilities that you all will have when you are um, bilingual um, professional, right? Um, so of course there are many 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 new job fields that are related to the internet, but some of you that are already thinking of studying maybe um, hospitality degree or a uh, health related um, degree. Of course, um, if you have a Spanish as an asset, you will be 
most that uh, an employable person to be a pediatrician or, a, or, uh, or any specialty in the medical field, uh, being able to work in a, in, a, in a hospital abroad, also in your own country, because of course, there will be always people that need a Spanish speaking um, doctor. And as a matter of fact, we do teach um, medical Spanish in our, in our department, which is a very useful course for students on, not only from Jamaica, but from all over the Caribbean that are studying here and they do, um, they do get a bit, quite a, a good experience from the course. Um, of course, you could be, as also Ms. Um, Sojini Ashby said, a professor, you can work in the education field, um, and all of these um, careers that you can see here and many more. Just I wanted to show you this fun fact that there are 21 countries that consider Spanish their official language and that there are more than 497 million of Spanish speakers in the world. So of course you will be more than useful for the community. Um, and I think now we will just jump into the game for you to be a bit engaged. So uh, if you please go to kahoot.com, sorry, kahoot.it, See if it's working. You will have to introduce a code that we will see in the minute. Uh, I especially encourage students um, from the high schools we have in here and students in general to, to join because there is a maximum capacity, but uh, if we also can play all together, of course. So just, just go to kahoot.it. Just to make sure that it's working. Let me see. Okay, we have the first one. Two, three, great. Okay, we will give a minute and if not, we start, okay? And all of you can also uh, write in the chat your answers if you cannot join us, but please stay with us. Okay, oops, we have more. Okay, not bad. Let's start then. So the questions are in Spanish, but I'm sure you will understand. And if not, ¿cuál es la bandera de España? Which would be which one of them is the Spanish flag, the flag from the country. Spain. Cuatro respuestas, cinco, okay. Very good, all of you were correct. So, ¿cuántos países tienen el español como lengua oficial? How many countries have Spanish as their official language? We have some numbers. Remember that you can also answer in the chat. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, very good, 22, yes. Mm -hmm. Osuna es de, 
I know they really like Osuna. Let's see if they know where is he from. Puerto Rico was the correct answer. Some people thought he was from Colombia or from Costa Rica, but no, from Puerto Rico. Kai, you are doing great. <laughs> ¿Qué baile es? So what is the name of this dance? <laughs> you can also open your mic and answer. Eh? Don't be shy. We have salsa was the correct answer. Some people thought it was tango. I don't think they are from the same country. Anybody knows where is salsa? Where do they, where is salsa most um, typical or traditional? No? Mr. Martinez, maybe you can help us. Repeat again the question. Where is salsa from? Where is the oh, country? From Cuba, of course. Ah, okay. They maybe thought it was tango what they were dancing. No, no. And tango? Anybody knows? From Argentina. Okay. Who is the painter of this painting? We have. A Spanish one, Maru Jamayo, Pablo Picasso, also from Spain, Frida Kahlo from Mexico, Omar Gil Reset, also another Spanish one. <clears throat> Very good those that chose Frida Kahlo, okay. And Pablo Picasso, no, I think he had a different style. <laughs> okay, from is there, okay. En la fiesta española de la tomatina, se reparten, so what is the... the the amount of tomatoes that they use for this traditional holiday. Um, 150 toneladas, so it's quite a lot. You were a bit, you, you were a bit short, but almost there. <laughs> okay. We have, which is the capital of Europe, the, sorry, from Ecuador. <laughs> Quito, Buenos Aires, Guayaquil, or Cusco. Let's see. Quito was correct. Okay, Buenos Aires, again, is Argentina, right? Um, Let's see, we're getting there. ¿Cuántas letras tiene el alfabeto español? How many letters do we have in the Spanish alphabets? Very good. Well, it was 27, you were thinking it was 26, so almost there, not bad. ¿Dónde está el Machu Picchu? ¿En Argentina, en Perú, en México o en Honduras? It was... The correct answer was en Perú. Very good, very good. ¿Qué tienen en común Messi, el mate y el tango? ¿Qué tienen en común? Messi, uno es a football player. El mate, right, es a very typical drink there. Tenemos de Colombia, son futbolistas, no tienen nada en común o son de Argentina. Muy bien, very good, los tres son de Argentina. Uh -huh. 
¿Verdadero o falso? En África hay dos países con el español como lengua oficial. So there are two countries in Africa where they have Spanish as their official language. Is it correct? Is it true? Or is it false? Well, you were three thought that it was true, three thought it was false, and is it true, right? Um, very good. Ya yeah, son is the first one. ¿Qué serie está ambientada en México? I'm sure you are quite familiar with Netflix and the Spanish speaking series and movies. So we have La Casa de Papel, which is Money Heist in English, Elite, Control Z, or Las Chicas del Cable. Which one is it? Las Chicas del Cable was it? was the one that you thought, but actually that's what, that one is set in Spain. So it's control set, set in Mexico. Okay, almost there. En este país hispanohablante, también algunas personas hablan patua. So there's one Spanish speaking country where they do speak also patua. She's in Spain, in Venezuela, in Mexico, or in Panama. Very good, in Panama, okay. Okay, to, to go, España hace frontera con Francia y Portugal. Is it true or is it false? Yes, that's true, okay. And our last question would be, ¿En qué país se celebra el Día de Muertos? That's an easy one. And it's coming, actually. It's next week. Next Thursday would be el Día de Muertos. Colombia, México, España o El Salvador. Very good. Okay, you were all correct. It's in Mexico. Um, so that's it. Uh, it was just a little game for to see how... Um, how do you do in the, in the Spanish speaking countries and cultures? And our winner is Jay. So congratulations. Yes, Ashby, sorry, Miss, Miss, um, Miss Ashby. I just wanted to add that there is another country, another Spanish speaking country where Patois is spoken and that's Colombia. That's true, it's San Andres Island, right? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. That's I correct. Went there. I went there and a young lady gave us a tour of a church and <laughs> she spoke patois that we speak. It's a little bit different, but. <laughs> That's true, it's more, with more Spanish words, no, and more Spanish origin. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks a lot. I hope you had fun and I hope to see you all in the department soon, very soon, learning Spanish and enjoying learning the, uh, about our culture and all the differences that we have in, in every different country. Okay, so thank you so much. I hope that you enjoy the Kahoot. I hope you enjoy the game. I think that we have at least three new students for our program. The three winners definitely have to come to the program and those who didn't win then even more so, so they can yes. know the answers next time. Um, honestly, in the department for every section, any language that you choose, we are here to, to help you, to make it interactive, to make learning a new foreign language fun. And we promise you a great experience if you join us. So do not hesitate to, you know, come try one of your one of our courses. We're sure that once you take one of our courses, you will want to continue. So that's our hope. And now we are going to go to Ricky and Shaw's video. As he did a double major in Spanish and French. And I am sure that he will be even more convincing, more convincing than I am that uh, learning a foreign language and choosing our department is the right choice for you. Thank you. 
Hola, bonjour, hello. My name is Ricky Ann, and I'm a proud student of the Modern Languages and Literature Department within the Faculty of Humanities and Education. Currently, I am pursuing a double major in both French and Spanish, and I can honestly say that it is perhaps the best decision that I've made as it relates to my academic career. As of right now, I am in Spain as an exchange student, and this is one of the many opportunities that studying a foreign language has afforded me as an individual. I absolutely love it here. The people, the culture, and the overall opportunity to be fully immersed in the Spanish-speaking environment. I really will miss it when I have to leave this place. Fortunately for me, however, because I also study French, I get another opportunity to return to Europe as a teacher's assistant in France following the completion of my degree. How amazing is that? Studying both French and Spanish has proven to be rewarding as it relates to my creativity and overall growth as an individual. To top it all off, the lectures within the Modern Languages and Literatures Department have been nothing short of exceptional as they've been there every step of my journey to guide me along the way with their patience and their understanding, all of which I am extremely grateful and appreciative. So there it is. I laid it all out for you. What are you waiting for? I challenge you to take on a foreign language, whether it be Spanish or French, or maybe even both. I guarantee you that it will open up a world of wonders and adventure that you will not regret. Ciao! As you can see from both the videos and our presentations, coming to do uh, major with us in the Department of Modern Languages and Literature means that you will have a lot of opportunities to travel. You are you will have access to scholarships or teaching assistant programs that will get you to a Spanish or French speaking countries. So in the case of French, the teaching assistant program in France has already been mentioned. In the case of Spanish, we do have an exchange program with the University of Valladolid that gets you there for one semester as a student during your program. And we also have a similar program to the one in France, a teaching assistant program, but this time with Colombia, so the ICETEX program. And you will just have a lot of opportunities, not only to learn here with us, but to travel and to learn in new spaces and new environments. I think it is now time to give the floor to our Asian languages. As I mentioned before, the Department of Modern Languages and Literature has minors in both Chinese and Japanese, but we are now going to focus on Chinese. Right, so the representatives for the Chinese section, Dr. Fen Lei and Mr. Shurui, will now give you all the reasons to choose Chinese as your foreign language. You have the floor, Dr. Fen. Okay, thank you, Tamara. Uh, so it's our turn now. Um, so let's let me share the screen. Okay, so uh, while learning Chinese, that's a required uh, topic. So we have to prepare that. Actually, uh, the learners should be in the position to answer this, not the teachers like us. Uh, but whatever, I just uh, try to share with you what we think that what the reasons are the reasons uh, for uh, learning Chinese language. Okay, look at the uh, some things from China. These things are, I think, are popular in the English uh, world already, but these are all uh, famous in China as well. A journey of a thousand miles must begin with a single step. I saw this actually from time to time from the CNN. 
website. Uh, then giving a fish is not as good as teaching how to fish. Yes. So that's how we teach it to do, not just to give his students a fish, but teach them how to fish. Then they will be a more independent learner. Be not afraid of going slowly. Be afraid only of standing still. This is also uh, beneficial for learners of the foreign languages. Yeah, don't stop, just go and go. Don't, uh, don't mind if you are making slow progress. If you stand straight, do not fear a crooked shadow. Yeah, of course, that's a, a moral uh, res uh, perspective. A single conversation with a wise man is worth a month's study of books. That's why we respect wise people, sages or saints. So it's, you benefit a lot from talking to a very uh, wise person. Yeah, everybody knows that. So from these things you can know, it's worthwhile to learn Chinese. Well, learn this wisdom and uh, uh, to do the language as well. Then I'll share, you, um, I'll share with you some pictures of China. Of course, these four pictures are, uh, look very old. Yeah, they are ancient uh, architecture or, or buildings. Uh, but China is a country mixed with ancient and modern. So these pictures shows another aspect of beauty and modernness. Um, look at the, this picture. It's a very typical and very special picture because uh, many people might be curious about that. Look at the, look at the train, the train just the drive through the building, a residential building. Yes, that's why, because, because uh, it's, uh, the city is Chongqing. It's a city of almost 30 million people. It's a mountainous city, so it's packed. So we can't just, uh, because we want to uh, build a railway, then we demolish houses or buildings, it's difficult. So we just, that's the option. Yeah, it needs courage and also interesting. <laughs> All right, so the reasons why uh, we should learn Chinese, if you Google it, you can have as many as 20 different reasons. I just uh, picked some. Yeah, Chinese is widely spoken. It's, uh, it has a large number of native speakers in the world and it uh, has the uh, second largest speakers in the world, uh, both as first language and uh, second language, or even third language. And the cultural appreciation, uh, you, you already saw the pictures of Asian China, uh, look, cultural appreciation, we appreciate our culture, the heritage, yeah, we are proud of that. So if you study Chinese, you can also have a feel of that, maybe you will love it. And the business of trade, you know, made in China everywhere, and the people get rich by buying products and sell it outside China. Uh, Jamaicans also, some Jamaicans, some uh, supermarkets are owned by Chinese, but the managed by Jamaicans. They make money by trading uh, from China. And economic and technological trends, oh, you, of course, we have high tech, uh, and econ economy, our economy is the second uh, next to the United States. This is, a, everybody knows about that. So you can also benefit from this if you do Chinese. And immigrant or family ties. I know that um, some Jamaicans uh, have like, uh, you know, like one fourth or one third of uh, Chinese blood. Uh, I know that because some students uh, talk about that. Yeah, maybe that's also one of the drives of uh, doing the language. Career prospects, prospects, uh, prospects yes. Uh, if you learn to many Chinese bosses come to, to me and my colleagues asking for, to recruiting people, Jamaican uh, people who can speak Chinese. Yeah, you can work and, uh, in a Chinese construction company or uh, Huawei or, whatever companies located in China, or even you can work, find a job in China. Uh, yeah, that can help learning Chinese, speaking Chinese can help you. 
personal growth. I think this is mentioned by our French and Spanish colleagues. I think, yes, doing a different language enhance your, your ability, uh, overall ability actually, uh, not just the language. Uh, so personal growth uh, is also important uh, for everybody to, to develop. Travel and cultural experience. Yeah, I've showed you pictures of China. China is huge. Maybe if you spend one week or even one month, it's not enough. You have to spend half a year at least or one year uh, plus to see all the places of interest in China. So that's why uh, we welcome uh, guests and the visitors. Uh, you can experience a very something very different. And ease of learning. Maybe my colleagues or many students, many learners don't agree with that. <laughs> Why Chinese is easy to learn? Um, actually, Ch Chinese is different from Spanish and French, but difference doesn't mean that it's difficult. If it's difficult, how can one billion people learn that language? So, uh, I mean, uh, e I mean, it's easy in, in terms of more, mostly, I mean, major grammar. In grammat grammatically, it's easy because we don't have a lot of uh, changes of verbs um, and adjectives and uh, nouns even. Uh, so in this respect, I think Chinese is uh, easier. Uh, but of course, uh, the Chinese characters, I'll show you later, um, are difficult. Uh, so that might be something difficult, but easy, it's easy when you speak it, yeah. Uh, so as long as you know the meaning of the characters, you speak it, everybody understands you. You don't need to think about, about think a lot about how to say that in a properly set, I mean, stru uh, structurally uh, correct order. I mean, yeah, that, in that um, sense, Chin Chinese is easy. Okay, there are many more reasons. So learners can, uh, can think of to learn Chinese language. Um, all right, uh, let's uh, look at, so I put games, I incorporate the games uh, actually in this <laughs> presentation. Uh, so can you guess based on the shape of these uh, Chinese characters, the meaning, you just choose. Um, for example, the first one, yi, the pronounced yi, but it means what, one or bar. Yeah, you can choose, you can say. We already have one answer. It says two answers, saying one. Oh, okay, good. It's one that. is correct, yes. It's simple. The second one, ren, it means the tree or person. Person. Person, it's correct. Reading in the chat. It's not that I know all this, huh? It, I'm reading the answers that you're getting. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, your guess is correct. Yeah. Ramonique is doing great. Two correct answers so far. Okay, okay. The third one, Shan, means tree or mountain. We have mountain. It's correct. Tamara, I don't think you know Chinese, so that's why. You, you are qualified to, to guess as well. All right, it's a mountain, correct? Wow, already without learning the language, you know the meaning of at least the three characters so far. All right, next, man, window or door? Here I say door in the chat, Chanel as well, Tramonique. We have several people saying door in the chat. Correct. I, I, I thought that these, learn, these people, um, Chinese learners already know or they, are, they have no knowledge, but their guess is good. Number five, call is the window or mouse? Here I say mouse. Accurate. Wow, wow. Okay, so easy, right? Then we have five more. <laughs> yeah, five more. This is more complex. Let's try. Sorry, the, this one is wrong. All right. 
của I'm gonna get fire. fire or water. We have fire. Kira says fire. Fire. We're guessing fire. fire. Perfect. Perfect. All right. Um, seven. Move a person or a tree. 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 Awesome. Awesome. And the draw is middle or straight. Here I say in middle. Middle, yes. China is Zhongguo, means middle kingdom. That's middle. Okay. And next to a heart. Uh, Xin, is it a heart or head? Heart. Kiran Tramonik are saying heart. Right. The shape looks like a heart, but it's a little bit abstract. Okay. And the last one, show is the arm or hand. Ramonik is saying hand, here as well. Yeah, hand. Hand, good, perfect. You go, yeah, 100% correct, correct. Wow, so Chinese easy, right? I think you have very good students here. Okay. Or definitely very good prospective students here. Okay, good, yes, yes, yes. So come to learn Chinese. You have talent for Chinese language. All right. So these two characters, you can see the shape, you guess. Just, the, I, I, I won't give you any hint. I, no multiple choice, just a guess. So what meaning, what possible meaning can be the first one? Inside there's a person. Inside there's a person. Yeah. House? It, it means a jail or prison. Oh, jail. See, I was thinking house. <laughs> yeah, it's, a, it's prison. It's, yeah. Oh, and this one underneath that one? Um, you know, I'll give you some options. One is a pavilion. It might be a pavilion, might be a house, might be an umbrella. Okay, you choose one from the three. Pavilion, house, or umbrella? I'm not sure. I'm not getting help from the chat now. <laughs> house, we're getting house, we're getting umbrella, different options this time. So, okay. he's saying house, Kira is saying umbrella. Okay, uh, the correct answer is umbrella. So Kira is right. Well yeah. done, Kira. Okay, umbrella. And these two, you look uh, at them both, please. And one means love, the other means cry. Which is love, which is cry? Which, which one you, it seems to be a, a person crying? Which, which one seems to be a person laughing? I'm waiting for the answers. Let's see what we get. Yeah. Let's see whether we share the same same feeling for the same I time. I guess, but I was waiting to see. Okay, so the bottom one is crying. I agree. I think my guess would be the bottom one is crying. The first one is laughing. Oh, you mean this one is laughing? Yes. And this one is crying? Yeah, that's that's our guess. Okay. Okay. So that 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 shows the difference between east and western. So actually the first one is crying and the bottom one is laughing. We cannot yeah. always be right. We cannot always be right. What can right, we yeah, but, but, but it's okay, it's a good guess, but uh, it shows that maybe we see something the same. Maybe we, we feel a little bit differently. Okay, it's not a problem, but uh, it's, it's, these are the complex characters. So you can look. And also, uh, let's see this. We, we, we see numbers from one to 10. These uh, are 10 numbers in Chinese. And then we use hand gestures to count them. I, I know maybe in Spanish or French or in Western 
culture, you also have your own size for numbers from one to 10. But these are our way of showing how to count one to 10. Yeah, um, just the, which one is different from, from symmetrical French? I'm not sure. Uh, but I think one, two, three, four, five, you can understand perfectly, right? Yeah, because just the, just five figures, one finger, okay. But the six, why six is like that? Because the shape is look like it's similar in, to Chinese character, right? It's not Arabic number, but it's similar to Chinese character, six. And the seven, why is that way? Look at my finger. Actually, it should be, should be like this. It also is like a gun, handgun. It's like a shape. Yeah, shape. Maybe this shape is like um, Arabic, seven. Looks yeah. Like a, like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This way. Okay. And eight, number eight, obviously, is the shape is similar to Chinese character. That's eight. But, and nine, also, this nine, I think, is Arabic. Like nine is a hook, right? There's a hook, like nine. And 10 is a cross. Cross obviously is, um, is Chinese, similar to Chinese character. So these are the 10 numbers in Chinese language. Um, okay, so, so before everybody, before I finish my mini presentation, you just try to learn these three greeting words. Ni hao um, means hello. Xie xie means thank you. And zai jian. Uh, is goodbye. So, ni hao, xie xie, zai jian. Not hard. Yeah, these characters are hard, but pronunciation, not hard. Okay, uh, thank you. Um, later on, I think we will show you a, a very short a mini video. Is that okay, Tamara? Yes, yes, it is. Okay. Oh, okay, you learned that already. Good. <laughs> uh, so, yes, I believe that, well, I'm not sure. Is, is Mr. Shuri going to present anything? No, right? We're going to the video by Ms. Yanelle Blake. Um, Ms. Mr. Ray sent, sent me a video, and, oh, okay. uh, and Ms. Guo also sent me a video. So, I, I'm not sure how to play that the videos, um, let's see. I, I, I guess can't see, maybe, no. I need to see my, my desktop, sorry. Uh, this is screen. I can't see my desktop, sorry. I need help, Mr. Cook, <laughs> Mr. McCook. I need help. How to share? How to share my? How to see my desktop? Because of my videos are on my desktop. Okay, Doctor Fung, I'll show it for you. Okay. Yes. Hello, I'm Jana Blake. I currently studying computer science at the University of Jinan in Shandong province. And last year I was studying at the University of West Indies where that's where I started studying in Chinese language. And with the help of the teachers at the Confucius Institute, I was able to pass HSK4 in May. And as a result of that, I was able to get a scholarship to cover all of my expenses while studying here in Jinan. Studying Chinese has provided me with a very wide range of experiences that I wouldn't have gotten otherwise, such as I was able to meet the ambassador to Jamaica, as well as the head of the political office of the Chinese embassy. I also got to go to several events, such as the celebration of the 50th year of diplomatic relations between Jamaica and China, also, learning Chinese has allowed me to attend things in China, such as the bridge, the Chinese bridge 
summer camp for youths of the Belt and Road Initiative. That summer camp had people from Africa, North America, South America, Asia, and I was there, I was able to make a lot of friends, have a lot of connections that I really hope will last a lifetime. And I hope that you too, when through learning Chinese, will be able to have even more of these great experiences. Zaijian. Okay, so yeah, Mr. Zhao and uh, Ms. Guo, do you have, do you, would you like to add something? To say something? Yeah, Mr. Zhao, Xu Rei. Hello, everybody. So I think Dr. Fong was uh, doing a uh, great uh, introduction. So I think I don't have anything more. So mm, it's, this is my first time for a webinar. So I just, uh, uh, I'm so, uh, I learned a lot from this. Uh, maybe next year I can share some some opinions. Okay, thank you. Ms. Okay, thank you. Hello, hi everyone, good afternoon. Uh, I guess I thought of uh, already shared uh, enough, but uh, all I just, uh, want to uh, to tell you is uh, no matter what foreign language you want to learn, just pick one, go get it, learn, and uh, um, try your best to master it because um, we are living in a, a huge world, you know? So Jamaica is an island, so why not just work out, go to, in sh share some uh, different cultures, different lives, and uh, meet some uh, new friends. Yes, why not? Yeah. Okay, thank you, Ms. Goa. Tamara, uh, so I just uh, wish to have this opportunity to introduce my two colleagues, the newly arrived. They will spend another two years here. Uh, okay, also work in the department, me from next semester. Uh, why is Ms. Shi Hongying, Ms. Wei Hong, and the other is Ms. Shi Hongying. Uh, Ms. 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 Wei, are you here? Can you say hello or just the greetings? Just show your face and say something to our colleagues and the learners briefly. Ms. Wei, are you there? I'm not sure she's here anymore. I saw her before, but okay, okay, all right. So, Miss Shi, Shi, uh, Shi, Lao Shi, you there? Hello, everyone. My name is uh, Shi Hongyang. I'm very glad to have this opportunity to attend the webinar. I have benefited a lot from this. I hope I can, uh, I have, uh, I can have more opportunities to attend this uh, webinar. Thank you for all of you. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, Tamara, that's uh, our, our section's report or contribution to this. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, as I think that you now are probably thinking about learning Chinese. It's definitely a wonderful language. And I am now going to give the floor to Ms. Perez, who mm -hmm. is a lecturer in Japanese. If you are anime lovers like I am, I am sure that you're very interested in learning more Japanese. I'm sure there are other things about Japanese culture that are fantastic, but I love anime, so I had to say it. <laughs> Okay, hello everyone. Konnichiwa. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Konnichiwa. Are you seeing my screen? Are we seeing my screen? Yes. Okay. All right. Konnichiwa, everyone. I'm Grace Perez and I teach Japanese here at UA in the Department of Modern Languages and Literatures. Uh, I am going to only give five reasons. Obviously, there are many more. As we heard from our other colleagues, there are other reasons why you should study 
not just Japanese, but all the languages, but I'm just going to choose five reasons to study Japanese here in the Department of Modern Languages and Literatures at UWE. So my first reason is it is the language of anime. And many of you love anime. Many of the students, my students here at UWE, when they when, when they're asked to, to say the reason they're studying Japanese, many of them say, because they want to be able to watch anime without, without subtitles. Well, you may not, oh, I had wanted you to say if you love anime in the chat. Um, so hi is yes. You can type hi for yes and e for no if you don't love anime. But in my experience, many of you love anime, come from high school loving anime and study Japanese for that reason. And you probably see, you probably are seeing some of your favorite anime characters right now. And I'd like to say that you're not going to be able to watch anime without subtitles within you know, the first year or so, but it's a good place to start. And it's a good place to start to uh, try to get to achieving your goal. Reason number four, it's a cool language. Uh, now, everybody can read that, and some of us can read this and this, but how cool is it to be able to read this, right? And we, we got some exposure to it from Chinese, and actually some of these, these characters are stolen from, not stolen, borrowed, maybe, from Chinese. Um, but yeah, it's really cool to be able to to read this, this um, like Japanese and, Ch and Chinese as well. And reason number three, you learn about Japanese culture. And in all the other presentations, the importance or the, the, the tight link between language and culture was emphasized. It's almost impossible to learn about culture without learning about language and learning language without learning culture. And we teach in, in classes, you learn about Japanese culture. As we teach you the language, we'll teach about the cultural context. And you'll also have opportunity to learn about culture in Japan Club. We have a Japan Club, which meets every Thursday from two o'clock. So they're probably meeting right now and learning something interesting about Japanese culture. We also have Modern Language Day, where we showcase different cultures and you get to interact with the different uh, people from the, the cultures associated with the different languages that we teach. We also do a cultural exchange, cultural language exchange with universities in Japan. And here are some pictures. This is a uh, student setting up for, for, for um, Modern Languages Day. Here we have a recent meeting of the Japan Club where they were learning to do calligraphy. And we have Japanese students doing a traditional Japanese dance right here. Also here we have a screenshot from a recent uh, language and culture exchange session with students from a university in Totori, Japan. Uh, reason number two, you will have opportunities to study and work in Japan. And uh, there is a uh, the, the Dokyo, Dokyo University in Japan, we have an exchange relationship with them. They have had students come from Dokyo to study here at the UE. And we pretty much every year we send one student to study there in Dokyo for one, at Dokyo for one semester. There are also other programs like the mixed program, scholarship program where you get full funding to do a, post, a postgraduate degree in Japan. We also have Japan Exchange Teachers Program, which is similar to the other programs that we've heard about for the other languages, where students get to go to Japan and work as assistant English, uh, English teachers, yeah. So studying here, uh, studying Japanese here, here at UWE will uh, open up all these opportunities to you. And I have some pictures here of students. So this is so these are students just like you who started out, studied in high school, came to UWE, studied Japanese, and now they're in Japan um, having wonderful experience. So here we have Shana, who is was a part of the JET program, and here she's at work teaching her students. This is Jovan, 
who went on the Tokyo program and he is sightseeing in his break. And then this is this is Tariq, who is hanging out with friends. And uh, uh, Tariq, by the way, um, he went on the Tokyo program. He, he loved it so much that he applied and actually got a job. He's going back to Japan um, next month to work in an IT company, right? This is, this is Cargill, who is currently in Japan studying Japanese on the, under the NICS program. So these are just some of the opportunities that will be available to you if you come and study uh, at UE. And what I consider the number one reason is that the classes are fun. So our, we have a team of Japanese teachers who work very hard to make sure that you enjoy, well, above everything else, you enjoy studying Japanese so that you want to continue, All right? So in class, we do games, we play bingo, we play Jeopardy. Um, here students are learning how to use chopsticks. We do our, our, our race, where they race to put peas in a cup um, with chopsticks, of course. We have guest lecturers, we watch anime, but it's not all fun and, fun and games because as you can see, the writing system is completely different. So it takes a lot of some commitment and a lot of effort to learn. And it also does involve hard work. But with the hard work, it's also a lot of fun. And I'm sure, I'm sure that you will enjoy. Um, I won't talk about the minor in Japanese, but uh, I, what I want you to do, I want you to, to write in the chat, type in the chat, um, the Japanese word, the picture. So there's a picture on the screen. I want you to write the Japanese word in the chat for the picture that you're seeing. So you already know some Japanese words for sure. And I want you to write what you're seeing here. What's, what's this a picture of? What's the picture showing? Are we seeing it in the chat? Yes, the answer. Yes. Okay. Okay, everybody got that one right. Next one. Next one is. Next one. Let's see. Yes. Tsunami. Yes. We did know that was a Japanese word, right? I did. And I think Tramonik did too. Here I say she didn't know. Okay, so now you know, you learned a new, but an English word, but the origin is in um, is Japanese. This one, how about this one? What is this one representing? Karaoke. Yes. That's correct. That's correct. The answer is karaoke, karaoke. And this one, the dress, the clothing, what is it called? Do we have the answer? I know it's kimono, but nobody <laughs> else is answering. Nobody said that? <laughs> okay. So it is kimono. Kimono is the correct answer. And then the last one, I don't know if we know this one. What's the collective term for these? What's this? What am I showing here? We have the answer already, emoji. That is correct. So e, e is Japanese word for picture and moji is like text. So this is actually a Japanese word as well. All right. And in the same way that we have in English, uh, Japanese words, words of Japanese origin, origin uh, Japanese also has lots of English words, use a lot of English words. So I'm gonna show you this video, which is all about Japanglish. All right, watch and enjoy. Uh, 
is a little discord. The, the sound is really distorted. We're not hearing. Grace, the audio is working well. So oh. the, the audio, the audio was not working well. So if the video is from YouTube, if you could post it in the chat so people can watch it because they're interested. Okay, I will do that now. Okay, that's it. So now you know some in English, English, English words that are also Japanese as well. All right. Yay. All right, that's it from me. Is it? Thank you so much. Um, I think, you know, like, you know, like thank you. Oh, I got to some. <laughs> Love it. Thank you so much. And um, I know that we were supposed to hear from Renike. Is he? Yes. Is he here? I'm not sure. Renique, are you here? Hi, 
there. My name is Renique and I am a second year student at the Hitotsubashi University in Tokyo, Japan, where I'm reading for a master's degree in international public policy. From 2015 to 2018, I took Japanese language courses from the Modern Languages and Literature Department at the University of the West Indies, Mona, where I also took some Spanish classes and to try to refresh my knowledge of French, I would drop by the French classes once in a while. But I can say that I had an amazing experience uh, taking courses from this department. For one, the professors are awesome and they try to help you to create meaningful connections. And one such meaningful connection was with the Japan International Cooperation Agency that ended up actually funding my current studies. I applied for the JET program in 2018 after graduating and this program is for those who want to become assistant language teachers in public schools in Japan. And I think my knowledge of Japanese was useful not only in the application process and the interview, but definitely for my daily life in Japan. In my second year, I applied for an exchange program to go to Canada and I received full funding from the Canadian government. And I think my knowledge of languages and my interest in different cultures were what really helped to set me apart from other candidates uh, in, for this scholarship. I definitely think that taking courses from the Modern Languages and Literatures Department has been useful in charting the path I took after graduation and I encourage anyone who is looking to take language courses definitely consider Japanese. You'll have an awesome time in this country and I think the connections and the friendships that you can make from knowing different languages are endless. So that's it from me. Well, that was wonderful. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Grace, for representing the Japanese section so well. Arigato. Um, yeah. <laughs> I really, I really enjoyed the presentation. And we now have the video in the chat, so we can watch it as well with better audio. Um, we are ready now for a little video from Darrell Ferguson, who is one of our postgraduate students um, who is now in the U.S. Hello everyone, I'm Darrell Stan Ferguson, a fourth year PhD student of Spanish at the University of Pittsburgh, and I'm a very proud, proud alumnus of the Modern Languages and Literatures Department at the UWI Mona. I did both my bachelor's and my master's there in Spanish before I decided to uh, come to the US to do my PhD. I was pushed beyond my comfort zone in the Modern Languages and Literatures Department, thankfully, uh, by both admin and the lecturers there. I believe they saw something in me that I didn't quite see myself yet. I believe they truly cared about me, and it's because of them why I'm the confident professional I am today. I big them up for uh, allowing me to travel to Colombia in 2016 to uh, teach English there for eight months. There is where I really honed my language uh, fluency and my teaching uh, competence. I also thank the department for helping me to get a travel grant to go to Cuba in the summer of 2015 to interview one of Cuba's finest playwrights named Gerardo Fulia de Leon, who I studied and continue to study here at the University of Pittsburgh. I really just want to thank the Department of Modern Languages and Literatures for helping me to become the best version of myself, and I want to urge any student who might be thinking of pursuing a career in foreign languages to choose the Department of Modern Languages and Literatures at the UWI Mona, because they really care and they're really competent. I, I believe they're doing a phenomenal work at producing graduates who can compete among the world's best because, believe it or not, I've had professors here who've commented on how impressive my research quality is and my teaching ability as well. So I want to thank you, each and every one of you in the department who supported me over the years again, particularly Professor Ramsey who continues to motivate and inspire me on multiple levels. Enough love. 
till we meet again. Blessings. And I know that most of you are still thinking about learning a foreign language. So postgraduate studies might be a little too far down the road, but just to say that, you know, as demonstrated by Mr. Ferguson, the Department of Modern Languages and Literatures is not only offering undergrad courses, but also postgraduate programs such as the MA, in liter in languages, literatures, and film studies, the MA in translation, and for the MA in translation, you need to have both Spanish and French. So I start thinking about that early, and um, of course the MPhil in Spanish, MPhil in French, PhD in Spanish, and PhD in French. And I would like for you to watch one more video from one of our students, this time Rolando Caballero, who has studied Spanish and IR at the University of the West Indies. Hello everyone, my name is Rolando Caballero a Belizean graduate student at the University of the West Indies and a former undergraduate student in international relations and Spanish. My time within the Department of Modern Languages was a splendid one. It is a department of student-centered approach where lecturers and administrative staff are the most supportive. Spanish has been very beneficial to me as it has opened doors where I got to study a semester abroad in Spain with the Universidad de Valladolid in partnership with the University of the West Indies. Additionally, it has made me more marketable where I was successfully selected as an intern in Mexico City with an international organization. I encourage, I strongly encourage you to seek out a major or even a minor within the department. It is going to make you more marketable, more experienced and easily accessible to the world. Modern language is very important and with the support of the academic staff and administrative staff within the department, your time will be as successful as mine. Les espero que les vaya muy bien y muchas gracias. Okay, so with that, we are very, very close to the end of the session. I appreciate you for um, having spent the last two hours with us, learning more about the department and learning more about the possibility of learning a foreign language. I don't know if there are any questions right now. But before we go to that, I just wanted to mention that even if you don't have any questions right now, you can always contact the department. Uh, you can contact the department via email, you can call, you can go by the department office. And everybody in the Department of Modern Languages and Literatures, we are all ready and willing uh, to help you learn a foreign language. And become your best self, I would say. So, Ron, I see your hand up. Yes, just two quick questions. I have them in the chat for ease of reference. Um, uh, yes. Okay, so the first question, does French still top the list as the world's most influential language behind English? And uh, you have an article there. And then two, how useful do you think the perspectives discussions in the article can be for students to pick interest in foreign languages? Of course, I will need to read the article, but um, okay. Is it still at the top of the list as the world most influential language behind English? I am going to be very diplomatic and not 
answer that question directly, what I would tell you is that French is definitely with uh, English one of those languages that tend to work as official languages in most international organizations. That's very true. And I do think that it is an extremely influential language and a very good choice um, as, a, as a foreign language. A choice that I made in my time as a student. So I, I think it is the right one. And um, I, well, I haven't read the article, so I wouldn't be able to answer. Um, you know, like if I think it will pick the interest of other students. But um, my answer to that, not having read the article, will be I think that we have heard a lot of good reasons um, for learning a foreign language today. And I think you have heard all those reasons, not only from the lecturers or teachers in the department, but also from a lot of our students. And to me, seeing those little videos where our students are so proud and are they're explaining how they have grown through learning a foreign language, um, to me that it is the best proof that, you know, it is always always a great idea to choose to learn a foreign language. I hope that is more or less answering your questions. <laughs> any other questions or comments or anybody that wants to, you know, like give a different response to Rohan's question? Rohan's question, sorry. Um, just taking a quick look at the article and their criteria, uh, I would say that the, it, it is potentially um, true um, because French scores very highly on not just the number of primary speakers, but also the number of secondary speakers. Um, the economic power of the countries using the language, France is very, is very influential. Um, then, yeah, the, uh, the number of area, major areas of human activity in which the language is important is also ranks very highly. The number and population of countries using the language scores highly, and also the social literary speed, uh, prestige of the language. So um, that, I, I, th I think it's a reasonable um, <laughs> evaluation. Uh, well, I would I would want to know from the students here if if an article like this is something that would pique your interest in the French language. Um, I am I am an older person. <laughs> this is fascinating to me. I need to know what the younger people think. Well. Any of our students have an opinion? Mm -hmm. Well, it seems like an interesting article and you now have the link there so you can read it. And, you know, I just, I am going to go ahead and close this session. I need to first thank all of my wonderful colleagues for being here today, for sharing their knowledge and their enthusiasm with all the students. I also need to thank every student that has joined us today for their interest not only in our programs, but also in learning a foreign language. And, you know, I really, really hope to see you very soon taking our courses. And, you know, we are, we are here to help 
if you ever have any questions, if you ever have any doubt, if you're thinking I would like to learn a foreign language, but I don't know how, I don't think it fits my timetable, anything like that, come by the office, the departmental office, send us an email, let us help you solve any issue that we you may have. We are really here to help and we are a group of extremely enthusiastic and caring people. So yes, we're all waiting for you. Choose a foreign language, choose the Department of Modern Languages and Literatures and, you know, choose yourself. I think when you choose a foreign language, you choose yourself. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you so much and bye. Hasta luego. Au revoir. Bye, à bientôt. Bye. Sayonara. Sayonara, we have. Yay. Bye. 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 I cannot pronounce that. I need to try again. Bye.